Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the recovery guy, and you have entered into the fix. Hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy. It is good to be with you today. I hope you are well on this uh, Friday afternoon or Friday morning, whenever you are listening to this podcast, no matter where you are, what you're doing, what time it is. I hope you are well. I hope you are in the process of uh, going from broken to whole. And if you are whole or you are well, I hope you're looking forward to to becoming a deeper and more meaningful version of that. I think uh, the greatest part of our recovery journey is it is exactly that. It is a journey. We always have an opportunity to improve uh, on uh, who we are, uh, where we're going, uh, and what our plan is. And so I hope you find yourself there. Hey, today, in today's podcast, it is entitled Forever Home. And there's a reason that um, it is that title, and I'll explain it to you in a moment. But today, it is Forever Home. You know, I love, as you know much about me, I I tell people from time to time I'm I'm a walking cliche. I love cliches. Remember, cliches are cliches for the most part because they work. Um, if If they didn't work, people would have stopped saying them a long time ago, unless Unless they're just really funny. They could not work at all, but they could be hilarious. And so uh, people would think that they could become cliches. Uh, But most of the time, things are cliches because they work. And uh, today is uh, is no different. There is a a well-known phrase. Maybe you've heard it before. And the phrase goes, or the quote reads, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Have you heard that before? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And actually, this particular quote was attributed to this um, Lord Acton. And apparently, um, John Edward Acton was the first baron, and he had expressed this opinion in a letter to Bishop Mandel back in 1887. The original statement, and I'm going somewhere with it, right? This is just not a, a lesson in, um, uh, in British parliamentary uh, concerns or statesmen. Um, the original statement reads, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men, right? That's the quote from 1887. However, before Lord Acton stated that, there was a primary originator of the quote, and that was from an English politician um, a little bit more actually than 100 years earlier, um, and, and this was from uh, the, the, uh, William Pitt the Elder. He was the Earl of Chatham, and and from like 1766, so even almost 100 years earlier, therefore, um, he's stated to have said in Parliament that unlimited power is apt to corrupt the minds of those who possess it. Unlimited power is apt to corrupt the minds of those who possess it, which is where we get absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, As we dive into today's podcast of Forever Home, let's look at what absolute means because forever is an absolute. And that's where I want to go with this today. So follow me here and let's see if we can make some sense out of this. So when we consider the word, the definition of the word absolute, there's three primary definitions that come to mind. Uh, first, it is free from imperfection. So essentially, it is perfect. 
it is free or relatively free from mixture, which means it is pure, and it has no restriction, exception, or qualification. Interesting. What absolute means, free from imperfection. As, as I understand it, uh, it is, um, it's the purest form. It is, um, it is an absolute. It is without restriction. It will or will not happen depending upon what absolute we're actually talking about. Even if we look at gravity, right, an absolute there, that adage, what, come, what, what uh, uh, goes up must come down, right? That's an absolute. So if it's down, it's going uh, it, 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 it to, is, it is from the position of having been up and now it's down. And that's what gravity is. And, and if you've ever fallen, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so this definition really helps underscore why whenever we're using absolutes, we must be very careful, you know, always, right, is one of those absolutes. You always do this or you always do that. Well, I could always do those things or say those things most of the time, but not all the time. It's Again, it's an absolute we must be careful of um, because when we consider things in, in, in our understanding of life, what doesn't come without a degree of failure or exception right? Uh, Most things that we understand in life do come with that element. There are, in in studying this thing out, I always find some pretty cool things to to share with you. And I I love science because science is hard to refute. And and, and so there there are what are called the seven universal laws that are considered absolutes. And maybe you've heard them before, but they're the uh, they're they're laws of relativity, vibration, polarity, transmutation, cause and effect, gestation, and the law of rhythm. I'll let you Google these things because they're really cool. And I think as a as a people of recovery, I think you'll like to understand what some of these universal laws that are absolutes are considered, and then we can apply them to our direct recovery. They, they're they considered absolutes because they have passed the scientific method of testing and verifying. Everything happens, everything that happens in our existence is part of one or more of these absolute laws. So today, I want you to understand and really be open-minded when we consider forever home because I want you to, to think about recovery in an absolute fashion. I want you to be so confident in it that you are as confident in what I'm about to say to you as you are in the air that you breathe. This is how confident I am with what I'm going to share with you is. Laura and I just finished um, uh, watching season one of uh, uh, Perry Mason on a- on HBO. Have you seen it yet? Um, it's actually a remake of uh, Perry Mason uh, from 1957 to 1966. I remember watching it as a child, right when I came home from school. It was usually on in the afternoon, and uh, as most of you know, I am that old. Um, I was actually uh, 12 years old in 1966, so you do the math. Uh, this show, though, is so good. It's it's a crime drama that's set in uh, L.A. circa 1930s, and being a, a person who grew up in inner city L.A., like Angel Flight and some of the other buildings, Roosevelt Hotel, there's so much I remember as a child from that area. It's really pretty cool. Anyway, it's a great show, HBO, Perry Mason, you're going to love it. It's really, really compelling. Anyway, Emily, she's one of the main characters on the show. And without um, without uh, giving anything away, um, Emily, during the show, she states, a turtle keeps its shell on its back, so wherever it is, they are home. Isn't that a great quote? 
I I love movies, right? You you've seen me quote movies, and uh, and I'll touch on Wizard of Oz again today. But you know, Finding Nemo and uh, Polar Express and other great movies uh, that that I've seen over the years. I love to quote them and some of the lines from them. But a turtle keeps its shell on its back, so wherever it goes, it is home. They are home. the The minute I heard this, I thought of my recovery. My recovery, check it out, my recovery is the shell on my back. And wherever I am, I am home. Wherever I am at, I am home. Did did that ever occur to you? Uh, You know, so so often nowadays, uh, uh, Alano clubs and AA meetings and things like that uh, aren't nearly as prevalent, especially if you're new or relatively new to the program. You might have been involved in recovery just a bit, and then this whole COVID-19 thing hit, and meetings were closed down and everything like that. But I remember being so lost and so alone and so afraid that I would I would never, ever be able to get back to where I wanted to because we give up so much along the way. Uh, I remember walking into a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous one day, and I realized I was home, that I never had to go anywhere again. And, and it came over me so strongly and so prevalently that I'd never left because I was so lost, so isolated. I'd lost my family. I'd given them away. Everything that was near and dear to me, I had lost. And now I am home. Even Dorothy you're familiar with the movie The Wizard of Oz, and, and and if you've never watched The Wizard of Oz or you've never watched it through the lens of, re, of a recovered person, I want you to I want you to watch The Wizard of Oz through the lens of recovery, and watch what Dorothy is going through in the beginning of the movie, why she leaves, what happens to her along the way, what happens when she finally meets the wizard, and then. Here we are, the end of the movie, everything is closing out, and Dorothy as Uncle Buck and Auntie M is all around her, um, wondering, you know, what happened to her and where she's been, and and anyway, you, you know the movie, if not, go check it out. Here's what Dorothy says. She says, if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't have to look any further than my own backyard, because if it isn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. There's no place like home. Isn't that credible? I won't have to look any further than my own backyard. That's the shell. That our our backyard, leap with me here, <laughs> leap with me, please. Uh, in my mind, this makes perfect sense. Our own backyard, that's that shell. And I and I never really lose that because there is no place like home. My own backyard, my own shell, that is my home. And you and I would agree that there is no place like home. There is nothing like recovery. There is nothing like that sense of being forever home. That's the absolute I'm talking about today. Once we reconcile our past and build our foundations on the principles of recovery, we find the home we have always wanted. Because we have always wanted to feel welcome. And And I'm not saying that the people who loved us and cared for us wouldn't make us feel welcome because they tried. For most of us, they really did. Um, Some of them did a very bad job, right? But it was explained to me in terms of forgiveness. My mom and dad did the best they could given what they were given. My dad was the middle of seven children, just like me. He was brought up by a very codependent mom. And my grandfather was 
alcoholic as well and owned some bars in Detroit. And it was very chaotic and and there were some real challenges in my dad's life. And my grandfather was a very mean man to my dad. And, and it showed to a large degree, but I learned later on that my dad had done better given the odds than, than how he was raised. My mom, very codependent, but my mom, she never knew her dad. He left before she was born. Her mom was alcoholic and she died when she was nine years old. And, and she was an only child. And then she was, she was being raised by her grandparents who died uh, before she was 16 years old. And, and she ended up being, instead of being going to an orphanage at 16, she ended up being raised by, by a neighbor lady. And so you can understand some of the dynamics there, right? And so given what they were given, they did the best they possibly could with me. And, and once we reconcile all of that, once we take all of our past and where we came from and, and how we were loved and who loved us and, and all of the dynamics there, once we reconcile all of that and we build our foundation of our personal recovery on the principles of recovery, we find the home we always wanted. And it becomes the shell that we live in that no matter where we go, we will always be home. And that is, I think, what the program of recovery taught me so much. And please understand, I think meetings are valuable. I think they're powerful. I think they're life transformational. But in the beginning, I, as much as wanted, I also needed my meetings if the plan of recovery that I'm involved with through AA and especially as a Christian and having gone through NA and OA and GA and SA and EA, um, I understand that, that my independence comes as a part or parcel to my recovery, that, that I can go anywhere that, that as long as I carry those principles which make up the shell of my recovery, I am always home. The principles aren't because they're spoken in a meeting. They're not because they're in a big book or, or a particular piece of literature. My recovery lives because I live. I learned a long time ago to incorporate the principles. There, there's a biblical passage and a spiritual principle that talks about writing them on the tables of your heart, right? Or, or keeping a box on the frontlet um, of my mind, right, as a prayer box. These things are now part of who I am. They are engrafted in this shell that I carry with me wherever I go. So no matter where we go, we will always be home. I am always home. I always feel comfortable with who I am because the shell, what I wear, is my recovery. We are never alone anymore. And those are absolutes. Forever. Always. Never. I will forever be home. I will always be home. I will never live alone anymore because of what I carry. And this, this is what I believe recovery offers us. And the sooner we can understand this, the more confident we can be. And the more confident we can be, the more open we are to learning. And we have an opportunity to become even more well than we would have been otherwise because we understand this concept. We understand this principle. We understand that, that we aren't perfection, but the higher power, God as we understand God, that is perfection because why would you want a higher power that is subject to failure? That wouldn't make any sense. So whether, whether your higher power is is a refined definition of God from a religious or organizational perspective, which is perfectly fine. Again, as a born-again Christian, I have a very defined version of who God is in my relationship with Christ, but that might not be who you are. But I would hope and pray that no matter who 
or what your higher power is, it is an absolute. It is pure. It is without fail. It is perfection because I am not perfect. My plan of recovery and the foundation for which it is grown from must have that element of absolute and perfection and purity. So when you choose what recovery path, choose wisely. Choose a plan that gives you back power to choose to wear your shell on your back, not somebody else's shell, because then you're living in their home and you and you can't decorate it the way that you want because it's not yours. Plus, they might want it back. And why would you have something so valuable that you don't have complete ownership in? Select a path that has a provision to stay recovered. This is important. Has a provision to stay recovered for the rest of your life. Why why would I ever choose something that limited me as a person, either in quantity or quality? Why would I do that? My whole life was limiting and restricting and negating. Why would I choose a path that told me I can't be anything that I want to be? I couldn't become the most happy, joyous, and free person I have ever met, that it can exceed goodness to become great. That was one of the most attractive things about the people I met in my early journey of recovery. These were people who actually believed and taught me that the shackles are no longer a part of who I am, that the handcuffs are off, that if I am a prisoner, it's only because I decided to remain a prisoner. I am free. I am set free. I have all the power that I need to become everything I ever want to be and the ability to help other people as my spiritual mandate. And I do recover. I can become well. I can regain control. And if you have a problem with any of this, Contact me and let me know, and I'll walk you through the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous or other recovery materials that that state this and, and, and help uh, solidify this as what I call absolute truth. I've never known a person, never known a person in my 34 plus years of recovery, I've never known a person who was 100% committed to this plan. I've never known them. To relapse. Never. I've seen a couple people stumble. I've seen people go back out, but only people who chose to take the shell off. Why, why would we do that? Let's keep the shell on. Let's make sure that our home, that we never have to go anywhere else, just like Dorothy found. A path that I'm talking about doesn't require me to look backward at my past. That's the challenge that some other people do. We have to clear away, as it says, clear away the wreckage of our past. Give freely of what you find and join us. So I have to clear that away. And and I consider, you know, when, when a farmer clears his land, why does he do that? Because he doesn't want the old growth to affect the new growth doesn't want anything to get in the way of what he or she is about to to grow because they will expect a certain thing at a harvest. So they clear away the field, and that's what we need to do. And then once we do that, I'm not required because it's no longer there to look backward at my past, except, except when helping someone. Um, I spoke this last uh, Saturday night at the uh, Salt Lake Alano Club um, as the keynote speaker for the old timers meeting. And, and I met this um, one person named Julian and, and he's um, reaching out to me and we're going to go through step one together. And even when I spoke, and actually you probably heard it on Tuesday's podcast, uh, my talk from uh, the previous Saturday, but we're going to go through step one together. And in that case, 
I will look back at my past, but for the reason of helping Julian, right? To relive that, to help him understand that I understand. Because other than that, the path of recovery I am on does not require me to look backward. I look at today and I clear away anything that's in my way, right? Continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. I look at today and I look at toward tomorrow because I want to plan. I want to be a part of tomorrow and I want to take a look at that. So again, my plan doesn't require me to look backward at my past. I really believe that when we do this, we can live the absolute that our personal recovery is a journey for a lifetime. It truly is. Why not live in that absolute? Why, why live waiting for the other shoe to drop? Why not expect, right? Um, step two is, is um, came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. Well, we understand that a definition of sanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Well, then that must mean that sanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect the same result, right? I mean, doesn't that make sense to you? It, it makes perfectly good sense to me. If insanity, the lack of, of proper thinking, of reality, I can do something over and over again and expect it to be different. It's kind of like... Uh, you know, I can I, I can't uh, uh, get my way into new living with the thinking that got me to the negative living. It it doesn't work that way. So so if again if doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is a definition of sanity, then once again the absolute truth is if I do the same thing over and over again, I can expect the same result, and that is why I continue to work a program of recovery. So I can live in that absolute position and that the journey I'm on is a journey for a lifetime, uninterrupted, and I hope it is for you as well. Here are three things that for me, and I'm going to own these, three things that I must do to ensure this is true for me. Very, very simple. Copy these down. These will be in your notes. Um Three simple things. I mean, there's going to be obviously more, but I wanted to use the KISS system here today. Keep it simple, sweetheart. So the first one is stay grounded in the truth that set me free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And trust me, I am free because I understand truth and I speak truth and I'm oftentimes more transparent than I probably need to be or can be, but I don't know any other way. The truth has set me free, so I'm going to stay grounded in that truth. I'm going to hold fast to the things that I know to be true. The next one is to be open to add new elements to my plan. You know, as we go along the way, we need to, you know, as far as the how, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. I want to stay open-minded to other things that, that can, with, with alignment, going in the same direction, never taking me off somewhere else, because remember, I'm grounded in truth. But I can learn deeper and more relevant understandings of that truth as I go along the way. Sometimes it's through divine uh, uh, intervention. Sometimes God just speaks to my heart and, and I understand things through prayer and meditation. Sometimes I'll read something. Sometimes I'll hear it in a podcast. Sometimes you will tell me. Sometimes I'm just observing nature, but I'm going to add and I'm going to be open to adding new elements to my plan. And if they keep me in alignment and help me grow, I keep them. And if they don't, I don't. It's, it's very simple. And number three, I pray for and assist others along the way. I do. I ask God every day, God, who do you have for me? What person can I be introduced to today that I can help them understand these absolutes, these truths 
that you have instructed me in that has given me the quality and the quantity of time that I have today because everything I have is a gift. Everything. I am no more special. (laughs) Obviously, I'm no more intelligent if you've listened to me long enough. Uh, But what I have is I have a desire to stay well. I have a desire to become more recovered, to, to continue to stay in a plan of recovery to help ensure the absolute nature of my recovered status. This is what I enjoy. This is what I'm about. And that is one of the reasons that I'm able to, to assist others along the way. I was so excited uh, uh, again the other night from my meeting. There were, there were a few newcomers there, and I gave my number out to, uh, uh, to them. And, and one of them, again, contacted me and said, hey, can you help me along the way? I pray for that actively, and I hope you do as well, because that is our spiritual mandate, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, right? We tried to carry this message and to help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. That's what our goal is. That's what we do. It is a spiritual mandate to help others become well. So stay grounded in truth that set us free. Be open to add new elements to the plan. Pray for and assist others along the way. I really believe that doing these things will add to the absolute position I decided to take. And I want to thank you so much for listening today. I want you to go to recoveryguy.org. And, and download the podcast, download the blogs, tell a friend, share this link with someone else. Send out an email helping someone. If this has helped you, it can help someone else. Regardless of where you're coming from in recovery, I want you to join our movement. Sign up for the newsletter. Go find me at recovery underscore guy on Instagram. I'm there, recovery underscore guy. You can follow me on a regular basis. You can DM me. You can message me. Let me know what I can do to help you on this journey of recovery. The recovery guy on Facebook, let me know what I can do for you. We are in this together. I often say we got sick apart, but we get well together. Once again, thank you so much for joining our podcast today. My name is Robert, and I am The Recovery Guy.